Hey, what's up? I'm John from Coding Addict and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to cover how to set up the bounce functionality in React app. During the video, we'll use use memo hook and the bounce functionality. If you're not familiar with these topics, please refer to these two videos. The bounce in vanilla JavaScript and use memo hook in React where I cover each topic in great detail. You can find links to both videos in the description, as well as a link to the source code GitHub repo. So I have this React application, where essentially I have a search form and then user can type some search terms. And based on a term, it fetches cocktails. And everything is awesome. But the problem is, every time there's a value provided in the input. The application performs a fetch request, which technically is not a big deal in this application. However, when you start talking about the rate limits and all that, it can become a problem. And we can clearly see that if we navigate to a network tab, and let's say if I'll start typing something, notice how many requests I made. So this is an awesome use case for the bounce. So first, let's navigate to the application. And let me just show you around. So in here, I have the context, this is where I have the fetch drinks function, which fetches the drinks from the API, I pass it down. And then in the search form, I grab fetch drinks. And I have on change for the input. And then every time the user provides the value, I set the local one, the search term, and I also fetch the drinks based on that value. Now keep in mind that this is coming from the event. So I grab event.target value, I set the state value first, and then I fetch the drinks. So what we want to do is to turn this into a debounce, where effectively from this function, we'll return another one, we'll have that timeout ID. And then every time, there's going to be a new value, we'll clean out the last one, the timeout ID, and then we'll set up a new set timeout. However, there's a big gotcha. And it has to do with re renders in react. So first, let's just try to set it up. So instead of straight up cocktail, I'm going to remove all of these lines of code, we'll start from the scratch. And I know that from this function, I'll return another one. And therefore, I want to invoke it here. And instead of passing the event in the search cocktail, I'll actually pass it to the function that I'm returning, because that's the function that actually is going to be responsible for handling the on change. So let's start with that timeout ID. So timeout, and the ID. So that's the one that we're going to be canceling. And then we want to go with return. Uh, and this is the function that we're going to be returning. That's why over here, I access the event. So first, we want to grab the value, we're going to go with const and then search term. That's basically my variable name. And that is going to be equal with event dot target and value. So I access the value, everything is awesome. And now I want to do the same thing. First, I want to set the local state value. And then I basically want to clear out the previous timeout. Because eventually we'll set this one. And as the user is typing, I want to clear out the last one. So first, let's start here with set search term. So that's the local one. And I'll pass here the search term variable that I just created, then let's clear it out. So we're going to go with clear timeout. Now we haven't set up the timeout, but we'll do that in a second. So timeout ID. Okay, great. And then lastly, remember, when we set set timeout, we actually get back that timeout ID. So we will clear out the last one, and we'll set up a new one. So we'll go over here. And we'll say timeout ID is equal to set timeout. And then let's pass in the function we want to run, which in our case is going to be that fetch drinks. And then in how long basically in one second. So long story short, while the user is typing, I'll wait for the last keystroke. 
I'll wait one second after the last keystroke, more precisely, and then I'll perform the fetch. However, I can tell you right away that this is not going to work, simply because in React, we have something called a re-renders. So what you'll notice that this function basically gets created from the scratch. Why? Well, because every time we're updating the state value, we're triggering what? We're triggering re-render. We trigger re-render, so this creates the function from the scratch. So even though in vanilla JS it worked like peaches, it's not going to be the case in React. So we can go back over here, I can refresh, and same deal over here. Notice I'm making all of these requests. And that's definitely not what we want. So this is where use memo comes into play, where effectively I can just remember that function and pass it actually as my value in the on change. And essentially, this is just going to avoid that whole re render thing. Basically, we will be able to have this functionality even if our component is re rendering. So, first, let's grab the use memo. Use memo that is coming, of course, from React. Okay, awesome. Then, in here, we want to pass in the function and we're going to go with search cocktail. We want to invoke it. And then we only want to invoke it when the component mounts. So effectively, this is just going to remember this function, right? And of course, within this function, we'll still have access to that timeout ID. So first, let's come up with a name, I'm going to go with the bounce and search cocktail. So that one is equal to the use memo. Okay, great. And now instead of passing here the search cocktail, we're going to go with the bounce search cocktail. So now let's try it out. Again, I'm going to go back. And you'll notice something interesting where essentially I can type something really fast. And only one second after the last letter I typed, that's when I make that request. So we have successfully created the bounce. Again, the biggest gotcha here is the fact that even though in vanilla JS, the initial setup works, because effectively, we just invoke the function, we get back the function that we're returning in the react, it's not going to be the case, because we will be creating this one all the time from the scratch, because there's going to be those re renders. So that's why we want to go with use memo, we want to pass in the search cocktail, remember, with use memo, we remember the value, which in this case is actually a function. So we only create this once, we don't keep creating this timeout ID from the scratch. And then once we have the bound search cocktail, we actually pass it here as a reference. So using use memo is one way how we can fix the issue. Now we can actually set up the entire functionality using use effect as well. The reason why I'm showing you this as a second option is simply because lately use effect has been well, I guess people are just avoiding use effect. Let's put it that way. And the setup is going to be following. So if you ever want to reference the previous one, just remember that there's a readme where you can see the previous code. So I'm going to navigate back and I'll actually remove the search cocktail we'll set it up from the scratch over here as well. And for now, I'll just set up an empty function. So in this case, we're not going to use use memo, we'll just use use effect, and we'll actually won't need to return from the function as well. So let's try it out over here. For now, I'll just pass in the empty function. We'll need another state value that is going to be that timeout. And essentially, in the beginning, it's going to be null. So let me use here use state, and that is equal to null. So that's my initial value. And I'll set it equal to timeout ID. So now I'll use that timeout variable as my state value, and then set timeout, and also ID. So that's the first step. Then we want to set up a search cocktail function. And this is going to be very similar. However, there are going to be some differences over here. And essentially, I just want to pass that search 
cocktail as a reference. So let me navigate back over here. Let me remove so search. And then I'll call this cocktail. Let's create that function from the scratch. So search cocktail. And then in here, we'll still grab the event. So notice we're not returning anything from the function. So we'll right away grab that event. Same deal. Let's go with const and then search search term that is equal to event dot target that value. Now let's set up that state value. So set search term. That's the state value we will go over here with search term. Then we want to clear out the previous one. So we'll go over here with clear timeout. And we'll pass in the timeout ID, whatever it is. So this one over here. And then we'll set up a new one by passing in the set timeout. So here's how it's going to look like. So we're going to go here with set timeout ID. And remember, when we set up set timeout, it actually returns it, correct? So we'll actually pass the set timeout as a function itself. So notice over here, I go with set timeout, and then I pass in the functionality. So this is kind of a tricky one. But remember that set timeout does return the ID. So first, we clear out the previous one. And then we set up a new one. Now, as far as the callback function, again, I'm going to run that in one second. And I'll also go with my fetch strings. And now I'll grab that search term. So search term. Let's save that. And once we have this one in place, we want to quickly set up a use effect. In the use effect, we'll pass in our callback function. We want to set up the dependency array. And we'll say every time the timeout ID changes, I actually want to return a cleanup function. And inside of the cleanup function, we'll clear out the timeout. We'll say clear timeout and we'll pass in the timeout ID. Let's save that. And once we navigate back, test it out. Again, that's the form over here. And notice I type, 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 type. And one second after the last letter, that's when I set up the fetch request. That should do it for a video. Hopefully everyone enjoyed it. And I hope to see you next one.